such a peculiar show. What do you think is the cause for its lasting success, or seeming lasting success? I mean, I think it's it's incredibly fun, but I also think it does the wonderful thing of, of balancing uh, sort of excitement and the monsters mm -hmm. and the action with uh, like a really strong underlying story about family and relationships. I mean, you watch that show and you watch Tom and Nicole together, uh, and it's the most compelling duo on television. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're so charismatic, and it's such an emotionally centered story. And we get that also with um, with Lindy this season, and I, and with our new characters, with Lance and Nikki and, and Shannon. And um, so I think that's what the appeal is. I mean, the the, the action and, and the fantasy is only it's only effective if it's grounded in sort of real human storytelling. And I think that's what the writers are doing a fantastic job with from the get-go, especially this season. Mm -hmm. so. so you guys are going to be interview. Are you guys going to be investigating a lot of the of your Sheriff Corbin's cases? Because there are so many that were left. I mean, they just take. Yeah. They're all open. They're unsolved. Supposedly. Yeah. Well, without I mean, without spoiling too much, I'll say that yeah. a big part of uh, my storyline with mm -hmm. uh, with Jenny this season is digging into uh, our, my father's work right. and wanting to find out more about what he was doing and how he got involved and sort of what that means for the greater picture. So Sheriff Corbin's presence. Uh, uh, is very much going to be mm -hmm. felt uh, in, in our storyline. Are we going to get any flashbacks with you and Corbin? Possibly? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I hope cool. that would be wonderful. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, we haven't yet, but we're not done with the season, so anything yeah. can happen. But uh, I'd love to. I'd love to work with Clancy because he's. Awesome. I mean, I think what's what's amazing about Clancy Brown is I mean, he was he was in the pilot episode yes. and then a couple flashbacks. So his, his yeah. screen time in the show was minimal. But he's so looming. Yeah. I mean, it's because he's, I mean, as an actor, he's got that warmth and that presence where you feel like, oh, I, I want him to be my dad. <laughs> right, you know, I, want, right. I want him to be my mentor. And I think it's amazing that you feel like he's still a part of this world even though he was killed. Right. You know? Well, and two, it was, I thought it was kind of interesting. Well, in the, the episode from Thursday, you were like, well, you know, you and, you know, Jenny and, and Abby really got most of his attention. And yeah. you mentioned that. So I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. How, how do you think that's going to play? I mean, do you think he's going to be really jealous? Well, again, I think, I think we, um, that, I, I'd say the jealousy was something that was very present mm -hmm. in the episode that I did in season two. Yeah, and by I the guess. end of that, uh, we'd, we'd resolved that somewhat. Mm -hmm. and I think uh, throughout the course of that, um, Abby sort of made Joe understand why he ha why yeah. his father had been so busy, and I think after turning into a Wendigo and, and, eating, <laughs> and eating most of your best friends and your entire platoon exactly. in Afghanistan, uh, you sort of real uh, Joe sort of realizes oh there's something much bigger going on that my yeah. father was a part of, and I think in this season rather than it being a jealousy about that, now it's actually a, my father is doing something amazing, and right. I, I want to be a part of that somehow, and. Uh, so yeah, so it's a bit, it's a, that, that conflict isn't going to be so severe. Working with the effects on the Wendigo, how much fun was that? Did you get to work with the Well, it was great now, and I don't know if you guys know this, so the actual guy in the Wendigo costume wasn't me. Oh, uh, really? That was um, oh. one of our wonderful actors, uh, Marty Matulis, who did, um, gosh, he, I mean, I think he was Sandman, and he was Moloch oh, a few yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. He's done a lot of our creature work, because it takes him about five hours to get in all that stuff. I know. So if they're shooting a scene where it's me and then I'm transforming in or out of the Wendigo, they would have to stop production for five hours while I changed. Uh -huh. So it makes a lot yeah. more sense and it's a lot easier for me oh, yeah. to have a, have, a, have this other actor come in and do that. And he's also like two feet taller than me and, <laughs> and all that and, uh, and he's a total trooper. So and you'll see more of Marty uh, as a number of different creatures this oh, season. Be back for more. So no demand on your part to try out the uh, suit on No, no demand. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I think... It, I not think feeling like you need that experience. I don't think so. It's not on my bucket list right now. Uh, I just, I mean, I don't know how those guys do it. It's so hard. I mean, they're sitting in those full things yeah. for the entire day. I mean, they're okay. sort of the unsung heroes of the show. In so. the heat. In True. the heat. Like, I can't even imagine heat. that. That was crazy. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, no, I'm fine being in people clothes. So, okay. coming back, did you, were there things you had thought about that you were able to bring to the character, to the show, to the conversations, the well, community that you think will enhance and keep you securely 
<laughs> in terms of, you know, keeping me on the show? Or? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm half joke. I, that would be yeah. I meant more so that you brought to the show. In other words, you get a chance to step back yeah. and think about what you were doing. Because I had more. almost a year. Uh, yeah, so you, you have know, a chance to revise it. And, and that character, it. I, you know, that's, so that character after we did the episode in season two, I had about a year of doing other work uh, before season three started filming yeah. again. So, so Joe Corbin was sort of living in the back exactly. of my head. Um, and that's nice. So, and I feel like then also as a performer, when I came back for season three, I was a little bit older and wiser, about a year older yeah. and wiser, and Joe's about a year older and wiser. I wasn't I was joking. No, you know, no, totally. <laughs> um, and that's nice. And I think one of the joys as an actor of doing it, this is my first time sort of doing as a regular on a TV show where you get to spend an extended period of time with the character. Right. This is my first time experiencing that. But you do get to kind of grow with a character over a long journey, both yourself as the actor and the uh, and the character as opposed to if I'm doing a play I'm telling the same hour and a, or two hour long story right. every night that I'm doing it but with this you get to tell a different story each week and there's a real journey that you can go on and that's what I'm really excited about Is Joe still in the cabin now? Is he in the cabin because Ichabod's now living so, with Abby? Yeah. So <laughs> Joe is I, Joe is living in Corbin's cabin okay. I, don't, I think we sort of mentioned that Bri, he sort says I brought, he brought over a box from yeah. the cabin it was, it was quickly mentioned but Joe's living in the cabin. Jenny is now living in a sweet trailer in the woods. <laughs> I know, I couldn't believe that. Uh, which Lindy, I think, wants to steal. She's been trying to like find oh, out if she so can like get the, buy the trailer or something because <laughs> it's awesome. Um, and uh, I think when Ichabod left on his journey, mm -hmm. um, he sort of, you know, said yeah. to Joe, "No, you should have your dad's place." Right. Um, so that's where Joe's living while he's, you know, he's working now as an EMT. As we Are we going to see you as an EMT? Uh, yeah, you will. Oh, yeah, cool. um, you know, I think uh, it's nice that they give us day jobs. Mm -hmm. Because you know you don't get paid demon hunting, unfortunately. <laughs> exactly. Oh. But uh, but yeah, and I know a lot of people were wondering about the whole Quantico yeah. thing because at the end of last season I'd said I was going off, I was going to try to go to Quantico, but I think uh, Joe probably Joe didn't finish college, <laughs> and I think at the time he didn't realize that you needed yeah. a college degree to join the F FBI. Oh, you know, I think because okay. he started high school and did maybe a year of school and then left for right. the Marines. So Quantico didn't work out unfortunately, uh, but he was able to. To, you know, use some of his marine medical training to do a, an EMT course and get certified, uh, and so that's why he, that's where he's that's where he's at. That's the day job, that's the we money job. See what happens? What yeah. about? Do you think there's going to be any kind of a love interest thing with Jenny? With I mean, you? I can't really speak to that yet, but I will say that, that the two characters definitely uh, have a, have a great journey yeah. so far in the season, and they they really get each other. You know, mm -hmm. I think they're both kind of they're both sort of lone wolves in a way. Yeah. You know, they're they're both. Uh, they're both soldiers. Mm -hmm. They're both. Um, they both don't have a lot of friends and family left, and so I think there's something about that that draws them together as partners and, and friends. Um, and it's great because Lindy and I have worked a lot as actors too, and uh, so it's 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 a wonderful relationship to get to have. Do you find when you do a show like this with demons and? Wendigos and other things, you go and look, oh, there's a Wendigo movie, I'll go see that, or there's a demon. <laughs> well, I, mean, I need to read up on my demon. No, I mean, somewhat, I mean, I mean I've mean, i always been a huge fan of genre and sci-fi fantasy, so it doesn't feel like a big, uh, I mean, it, I, it doesn't feel like a new world for me in terms of, as a fan, it's sort of something where I'm, I get to actually feel on set, like, oh my god, I'm, I, I'm doing the thing I love to watch, you know, and, and that's one, I mean, I, I, I was saying to Lindy the other day, it was like, I come to work, and I get to hang out with you and play with weapons and hunt demons, this is the best job. <laughs> in the world, you know, so um, it's very different than, you know, being on stage, which is where I mostly come from, yeah. but, but um, Patrick Stewart said something really interesting about Shakespeare and sci-fi fantasy and how similar they are, yeah. uh, and I really agree with that, you know, if you're doing Shakespeare, you're in a sort of heightened world with heightened language and heightened circumstances, and it's the same thing if you're doing Star Trek, or you're doing Lord of the Rings, right. or you're doing Game of Thrones, or you're doing Sleepy Hollow, you're in a sort of heightened, yeah. imaginative fantasy world, yeah. so that feels familiar. Familiar, and it's and it's really fun. Being, so. at, being at Comic Con, do you have certain things that you specifically geek out over? Yeah, what'd you collect? Yeah. I got as a kid. Or I was a huge X Men fan as a kid. Oh. Uh, uh, I was Wolverine like three times for Halloween. 
<laughs> I, I was the Wolverine in the yellow. The the pro, you know, so I was behind the baby. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and actually, this is a, this is probably why Lindy and I knew we'd get along so well. We finish each other's Lord of the Ring books. Oh my gosh. So we'll be we'll be and and we didn't even realize that was going to be a thing. But one of us would you know start saying something on set as a joke, and the other person would pick up on it. And I was like, we were meant to work together. Because uh, normally you do that, and people just look at you and they're like just, rolling uh, their eyes. Last week right. with uh, Ethan Elijah Wood, it was really entertaining. To hear. Yeah. Yeah. Compare the two. Yeah. So she was asking what you geek out here at Comic Con. Well, what did you I, go I, you out know, and buy? I haven't gotten to explore the floor yet because I, oh I, was, I was filming on Friday till very, very late with Tom. Got in yesterday, had time to grab dinner, and then this is today. We just got here doing this, and then tomorrow, oh no, tonight, I'm sorry, tonight I'm on a plane back to Atlanta and I'll be back on set at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Oh with, my God. With, uh, with Tom and Nicole for some more stuff. So I unfortunately won't have time to explore. We'll just have to keep the con open a little longer. Yeah, I know. And Tom sends his love. He was supposed to be here. He was so I sorry know, he couldn't. I I'm mad. But, um, uh, but he's going to send a lot of uh, good wishes to all you awesome. guys. Awesome. Well, we'll yeah. hope next time Thank you'll get you. the geek yeah. out properly. Let Thank me get a quick shot so of Thank you guys. Look Great this way. You. Be your, your geekiest <laughs> self. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There you go. Thanks, guys, so much. I appreciate it. Great talking to you.